Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, uh, we're going to explore the electric deck and some of the pan plate in turret number two for Battleship New Jersey. First, here's a word from the museum. Hi there, it's Andre Gardner. I'm on Classic Rock 102.9 WMGK every weekday afternoon. And I have so many wonderful memories of my time aboard the Battleship New Jersey. We've hosted some of our coolest events on that vessel, including the Locals Only Beer Fest, where we get local brewers together with our MGK listeners to sample beer for a few hours and enjoy music of our classic rock house band, all while at the same time loving those beautiful views of the city skyline and the Delaware River. What a storied history the Battleship New Jersey has, and this is your chance to continue that history for generations to come. We're asking you to please consider making a donation to continue its restoration, educational, and historical legacy. You can find out more by visiting battleshipnewjersey.org. And if you've ever been aboard that incredible vessel like I have, you'll see it's a no-brainer. Please consider making a donation today and help our friends at the Battleship New Jersey continue their fine work. Thank you so much, and rock on. So, a couple things to get out of the way before we go exploring today. Uh, we have previously explored the upper shell deck where I am now. There's a link to that video in the description, and that'll give you some information of the things you're seeing down here. We've also done other videos where we go uh, through the entire turret top to bottom, and a number of videos where we talk about uh, the guns on the ship. They aren't all going to be linked in the description, but make sure you check out the gunnery playlist that we have on the channel. Uh, there's some good stuff in there, but up till now, we've never really gotten any good uh, footage or information out of the pan plate and the electric deck, which are the structures directly below the gun house themselves, the, the, what you can actually see on deck. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's another several stories below that. This video today is possible thanks to the research of John Miano, who is a volunteer here on the battleship and uh, who is writing a book on IO-class battleships. And John, uh, like many of you, read the Anatomy of a Ship books and some of the other books that are out there that were written by people who uh, did not have an Iowa-class battleship to explore. And um, like many of you, he, myself, we, we all find issues with those books. They, they've got stuff completely wrong in them. And John is writing the most accurate book on Iowa-class battleships that I've ever seen. It'll be a while before it comes out, but stay tuned for more information on that. The research he's been doing in these spaces for his book is where I've been able to get the information for some of the stuff I'm uh, telling you about. And anything that uh, comes out wrong during this is from me not understanding it, not from his research. So, from the uh, upper shell deck here, there are five ladders that lead up into the electric deck. And the electric deck is so cramped that uh, generally that ladder just gives you access to what you can reach with your hands, and then you've got to come back down to the electric deck and go up another ladder to get to any of the other equipment. Also, this space basically hasn't been used since the ship was decommissioned, so there's no lighting in there whatsoever, hence the uh, headlamps. Um, we are in a steel box. The steel box is very small. There's no lighting. It's going to echo. Uh, we are using the microphone that you guys bought us. And um, we have many lights. And, and we've brought a lot of lights along. But please forgive the quality on this video. There is not much room for two of us to stand here and uh, film and talk about equipment. Well, let's head up. All right, so here's the hatch we just came up. This is the aftmost hatch. 
and uh, immediately we've run into one of the three elevation motors. This motor has a 1940 tag on it, and it's for elevating the gun barrels. Each gun barrel has its own elevation motor, and they can all elevate independently. The other thing we found as soon as we came up here was this. And right on the bulkhead, a piece of wood with a hook on it. Um, not 100% sure, but I have seen these used before. This is the electric deck. I believe that the idea is I've touched the live wire and I'm electrocuting myself. Somebody else can grab the non-conductive wood and grab me. Because if they just grab me by hand, then we're both being electrocuted. Uh, I have used, I've seen other ships just have wooden canes in their electric spaces for something like this. I think this is uh, a shipboard version of that. Hanging right there since uh, the 1980s. From here, if we go forward, there is a hatch we can stick our head up, but I'm going to come towards where you are, and uh, we've got another motor right there. All right, so the big motor right here in front of me is the traversing motor. It is attached to a reduction gear, uh, and beyond that is the A end of the motor. We'll come back to that. Uh, this is another motor A end, and here is the projectile hoist for the center gun. We've also got a ladder leading up to the pan plate. We'll explore that later. Huh. Another find, a stubbed out cigarette. Again, likely from when the ship was in service. All right, so we've made it all the way to the left-hand side of the back of the turret. This is the left projectile hoist. This is the left projectile hoist motor that's elevating the shells. And then that is the left barrel elevation motor over there. This angled cutout here is part of the gun pocket to enable the 16-inch gun barrel to elevate to its full 45 degrees and have four feet to recoil, you've got these angled pockets cut out of the electric deck here. Notice it also has a hatch in it. However, there are spare parts piled on top of this hatch, so we can't open it. But this just leads into the left barrel turret to gun pit. So, uh, we have now come up the right-hand ladder, and we're uh, on the forward right-hand side of the turret before we were on the aft side of the turret. So the uh, rotation motors and the gun pocket are behind us. Here, there is a small cutaway where you can see some of the... Uh, bearings that the turret rotates on that we covered in that previous video I mentioned um, and you can see just how greasy they are if you didn't take my hands as an example after climbing around in them uh, that shows you what the turrets rotate on and uh, from back here we have two things worth seeing So this is the pocket formed around the pinion gear that the uh, gun actually elevates on. And this 
is the right gun barrel's uh, center position. So if we're under automatic control and we're just being aimed by the computer, the gun should do all of this on their own. They're slave to the director and the computer and whatnot. Uh, if we go under local control, the gun setter here would have to grab these, the brass wheels, they've been uh, encased as part of the uh, mothballing process. This side's just got a handle to grab. This side, uh, you can't see it at all, but it's got a wrapped up trigger. It's one of at least 11 places you can fire the guns from, and this is not a primary place to fire at all. However, uh, the gun captain can set this as the firing location. Not that I can see what I'm shooting at from here. I do have uh, some dials in front of me that show where I've rotated, and uh, there's a big old speaker here above my head and all sorts of uh, communication devices around, and even some 1980s sound-powered headsets left in place. So, actually, let's see. There's the old style jack. You can plug right into the gunnery circuit. Yeah. This is a tangled mess, but it should probably hang here. And we've got this piece which would uh, sit on my chest, depress the button to talk, and then of course the headphone. Uh, and it's got a really long cord on it, so if I wanted to get up and move around, could still stay wired in, not that there's anywhere to move around. All right, so we have uh, decided not to come up the left-hand ladder. That is just access to some of the uh, left turrets, uh, left barrels, um, elevating machinery, which we've already seen an example of. Uh, a lot of this stuff in here is in triplicate. The, the elevating machinery and the uh, uh, and the setters positions all exist in triplicate. These are three gun turrets. Each turret elevates and fires independently. So each one has its own control station, and all those control stations are redundant. Another cool thing back in here, which is the forward end of the turret, it's got a cabinet with some uh, extra black iron piping. Excuse me and an old Sprite can. Caffeine free, why even bother? That's an old Lipton tea can. Uh, people ask us all the time if we find uh, stuff as we go around the ship. There isn't really too much cool stuff left to find. Uh, there was a time when my predecessor went into a void space and found a fully stocked office with all the paperwork and everything. But it's still quite common, especially in places like this where people don't visit, to open up a cabinet and find it still stocked with parts or trash. You know, uh, people ask if we ever find Kilroy on board. Uh, I can't think of any instances of finding that drawing on this ship. At least not that we know dates back to her service period, not somebody just leaving graffiti which, believe it or not, does happen. The visitors do leave graffiti on this ship and other museum ships. The other uh, thing back here is this space at the forward end. And notice I'm saying uh, front and back and left and right, not port starboard. The turret rotates. So what is now forward and port doesn't necessarily once the thing rotates. So it is the left gun or the right gun or the center gun. Uh, but we're at the front end of the turret here. And so this encases one of the two pinion gears that actually rotate the turret. And there's another one all the way down there. These pinion gears engage with the planetary ring, which is visible on the upper shell deck. And you can see that in that other video we went below. There's also a ladder here, which leads up to the pan plate. All right, so now we have climbed up the aftmost ladder uh, through the electric deck, and I'm currently standing in the pan plate. 
The electric deck has the A end of the motor, which rotates the turret. The pan plate has the two B ends. Uh, rather than a motor that's spinning a shaft to move the 2200 ton turret, the motor is auto hydraulic, uh, which is why it's got an A and a B end. The um, A end is creating pressure to move a, uh, a fluid, a hydraulic fluid that's all over the deck now. Um, but remember, if you aren't leaking hydraulic fluid, it means you're out of hydraulic fluid. Uh, it is pressurizing the hydraulic fluid to rotate the B end pumps up here, and then that is how you rotate the whole turret. Um, if that didn't make any sense, don't take my word for it, Google it, or wait for John's book to come out. Uh, he is much more of an engineer than I, and explains it much better than I'm parroting it back. Plenty of space in here. All right, so uh, right now we are next to the gun pit for the right barrel in turret two. Behind this machinery is the powder hoist. And through this porthole um, is actually the barrel for right gun turret two. We're stopping here because uh, on our trip to Massachusetts, we found this space, we were told by one of their volunteers who served on Iowa class battleships in the 80s. And he pointed out that the Iowa class battleships, like the preceding South Dakota class battleships, had beds in the gun turrets. This area, um, that we're about to go up into is called the penthouse. I'll show you that in a second. But before we get there, I wanted to show you this hook here. There's another one on that side, about six feet away. There was once a pipe rack bed in here uh, and some more up in the penthouse. Why are there beds here in the gun turret? There aren't lockers or other associated equipment. Of course, there's, there's no um, plumbing in these uh, for drinking water or toilets or anything. Uh, so I don't believe it was somebody's normal birthing station, but it does seem like, at least in wartime maybe, that somebody would be assigned to sleep in the gun turrets. Uh, I assume it would be one of those things that you rotate through. And maybe it's just here, so if you're on general quarters for a long time, and uh, you're able to uh, go to a lower readiness condition where you have to be at your gun, but only half of the people have to be awake and ready, that some people can come down here and sleep. And maybe it's something like just in uh, a combat situation, people will always sleep in here so they can immediately drop down and start turning on equipment. It might take a while for that stuff to energize, or maybe they pop up and they start pulling the pins that hold the turret in place. I'm not 100% sure. If you're a gunner's mate and you ever had to sleep inside the gun turret and know what the beds in the penthouse were for, be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. This feature uh, only exists for the right gun. Center and left gun have their powder hoists next to each other on the other side, and so this space is eaten up, but it ends up being more or less a void for right gun. I'm in quiet. Oh. Holes on holes on holes. Ah. Oh. We're at an angle. We're at an angle. So now we're in the penthouse. Notice here's a military wool blanket left over. And here's the hatch, which should be over this pit of death. Uh, and here again, you can see that we've got brackets and overhead mounting points for pipe racks to be mounted here. On well, Massachusetts, they've actually got a uh, counter set up here with a stool in it. It's still got a lot of the equipment 
that would have been in here, phones and whatnot. And here, we've got mounting points for where it was, but that's been stripped out. Uh, and then, of course, the cool stuff. These are the recoil cylinders, and I'm standing on the gun barrel for the right gun. It's elevated a little bit above the loading position. Normally five degrees would have it more or less level with this. Uh, and notice the floor in there has the nine inch red tiles that were pretty prevalent during the Vietnam era commission. Um, so it's sort of homier than the rest of the metal gun here. Yeah. At the back end of the turret, or the back end of the uh, gun barrel there, there is a bracket for a platform. Massachusetts still has their platform there. Uh, we have the bracket, we don't have the platform. Obviously if the platform is there, the gun cannot recoil, or the gun will destroy it when it recoils. But that platform is in the perfect place for you to step up onto the bridge of the gun to come into the penthouse without having to climb up through the electric deck if the gun is elevated at the right angle. We're at more of an angle than we should be again. Uh, anyway, behind me is the gun pit, which drops down into the gun pocket we saw the other side of down on the electric deck. And there is where the shell hoist comes up, and the spanning tray, and the powder hoist. And we've done a bunch of other videos from this end of it, uh, but this is probably the first one with me sitting on top of the gun. Thanks for watching our video on the electric deck and pan plate for turret number two. Uh, I believe these would be more or less identical for all of the turrets, although turret number three facing the other direction stuff might be on the other side. Um, do you think you would get any sleep sleeping in the penthouse for the gun turret? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. We also receive support from numerous other institutions and thousands of individuals like you. If you like uh, what the museum is doing and what our YouTube channel is doing, there's a link in the description that will allow you to donate. Your donations so far have allowed us to go from making one video a week uh, to five videos a week. So remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you get notified when we put out new content. Thanks for watching.